Now, your first key message is that head and neck cancer patients need to be managed by a multidisciplinary team. For a brand new patient or family member watching this, what's a multidisciplinary team and why is it so important that a dentist is part of it? So a multidisciplinary team are basically all the healthcare workers that will be involved in your care. And for a patient that has head and neck cancer, that's going to be the group of surgeons that may be involved and they may be the maxillofacial surgeons, the plastic surgeons, the ENT surgeons. It will be the oncologists involved, whether it's the medical oncologists that provide the chemotherapy or the radiation oncologists. It's all the allied health people that support that care, the speech pathologists, the dietitians. It's the radiologists that interpret all the imaging you have done, whether it's CT scans or MRIs or PET scans. It's people like Tracy, who we're going to meet as well, that um, coordinate the care for us and, and is a point of contact um, for the patient and also for all the multidisciplinary team. Um, and it's also then the dentist, because head and neck cancer, you can't separate the oral cavity and the, the care of your oral health from that. So the benefit of a multidisciplinary team is that all those players know each other, all those players communicate with each other, and most importantly, everyone knows the intent of that patient's treatment and what's going to be provided to that um, patient during the treatment and in the longer term as well. And my understanding is that another key message from you, Sharon, is that not only should there be a dentist in the multidisciplinary team, but that dentist should have training and experience in head and neck cancer. Why do you believe that's best practice? It's not something we routinely talk taught about in, as an undergraduate. And um, the care of patients who are diagnosed with head and neck cancer, you need to understand the implications of the surgery on oral health. You need to understand the implications of the chemotherapy and or the radiotherapy in oral, on oral health, both at the time the treatment's provided and in the longer term. You need to be able to liaise with those teams around what the implications of their treatments will be on the oral health and also what you need to do to make the patient dentally fit to receive those treatments. And then you need to be able to understand the impacts of those treatments, both in the, the short term when the patient's actually receiving the treatment, but in the longer term, because ultimately, as you said, people survive from head and neck cancer. So what do, do those treatments look like in terms of oral health care two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the track? And understanding that when you're planning for it, that you're thinking about those longer term ramifications for that patient as well.